This just in. One way to never reach zero is to keep taking one half of any number except zero, like four. Half of four is two. Half of two is one. Half of one is one half. Half of one half equals one fourth. Half of one fourth equals one eighth. Half of one eighth equals one sixteenth. Half of one sixteenth equals one thirty second. See, we get close to zero, but never reach it. Half of one thirty second equals one sixty fourth. Moderately frightening stories. The tale of a mad scientist and an infernal machine. A computer run amok. I go. What have you done? Ah! Master, I'm so sorry. I was simply dusting your computer. Simply dusting? Don't you realize what you've done, I go? Your overly fastidious behavior has accidentally tripped the program of my computer to vaporize whole dunk Michigan. Oh. We weren't supposed to do that for weeks yet. Don't you realize, Igor, I got a gal in whole dunk? Master, why don't you make a telephone call and warn her? Ooh, good idea. Uh, oh, I'd feel so guilty if she were vaporized in whole dunk. Lost! Line's busy. I'll send a telegram. Telegram from Professor Monstrous! What luck? I'll send a message back with the delivery person. <laughs> I'll get it. Just a moment. Oh, come in! One of the dating cats is gone! Oh, you poor thing! I mean, I, I, I've got a telegram for you from the electric company. It says that... I thought I told him the check was in the mail, all very well. Oh, oh, quite a nice place you've got here, Doc. Thanks, but I haven't got time to chat. Oh. I want you to send a telegram from me to someone in Ho-Dunk, Michigan. Sure, sure. What is it? Dear Hildegard, forget vlogs on Saturday. Vlog monsters. Oh, very nice. Oh. Forgive me for being nosy, sir, but, um, what's the problem? Oh, it's just that Master's computer is now programmed to vaporize Hawdonk. Yikes! Can we stop it? No, I don't think so. Well, can't we give it a, a, a distraction, a game or something? What do you mean, my dear? Well, we could give it a, a process to perform that would never end. Something that would, it would have to keep on doing forever. Like flossing! Quiet, Igor. You mean... That's right. Infinity. Oh. 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 But, but how? All right, well, step one. Take the number one. Yes? Step two. Multiply by one half. Go on. Step three. Stop if the answer is zero. If not, go back to step two. If you start with a number that isn't zero and take half, the product can't be zero. The computer will just keep going back to step two forever. That's right. Infinity. How fiendishly clever. But master, master. Yes, I go. How will I do my homework? I've always used the computer, and now it will be distracted. Infinity. Oh. <laughs> There, there, Igor. You know I'll be glad to come in and help you. You will? Oh, good. Please calculate the area of this circle. Perhaps that's a little a... later, Igor. There you go. Go play in the dungeon. There's a good <laughs> Igor. That's it. Miss? Um, Tina. Miss Tina. How would you like to go see the creation I'm building in the next room? Frankenstein's monster? No. A talk show host. <laughs> <laughs> Batman, your mission is to eat only multiples of five. When you encounter a number, you will have until the count of three to make your decision.
And beware the ruthless Mr. Glitch. I don't... He will eat you if you are wrong. Math man, math man, math man, math man, math man. Yep. <laughs> math man, math man, multiples of five. Math man, math man, math man, math man. <laughs> There's one now. <laughs> math man, 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 math man. Oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Math man! Math man! Math man! Math man! Math man! Math man! You gotta be faster than that, Math man. <laughs> yes, Mr. Throckmorton. I understand. Thank you, and goodbye. Sandwich Squad, fall in! One, two, three, four, let's make lunch on the hall! Left face! Pull! Dress right! I love the handkerchief, I got it right! Attention! All right, where's private matter? <laughs> what happened to you? I can't talk about this, I really... It's a private matter. All right. Dress it up and hold it down. Our mission for today is to make up sandwich trays for the Throckmorton party. We only have four dozen trays, and we want to get out as many sandwiches as possible. I have 16 sandwiches on this tray. Four across and four down. All right. Sandwich squad, fall in. Yes, what is it, Private Eye? Well, I uh, have an idea. There is more space here. Maybe we could fit more sandwiches on each tray. More than 16 sandwiches? <laughs> yes, what is it, Private Matter? Sarge, I know how we could fit more sandwiches on a tray. Oh, and how is that? Just stack them up as high as you can. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I didn't even hear that. Oh. We here at the Battle of the Balls Caterers never stack sandwiches, and we never let them hang over the edge of the tray, either. It's not aesthetically pleasing. I forgot! I forgot! I forgot! I forgot. Figure out how many sandwiches you can fit on each tray! Get it? Got it! Good! Now I'm giving you each a tray and a pile of sandwiches. <laughs> what is it now, Private Matter? Sarge, there are only three empty trays, but there's four of us, so one of us doesn't get a tray. <laughs> That's because you're not going to be making sandwiches, Private Matter. You are going to prepare the spaghetti. There's no way you can foul up the spaghetti. The spaghetti? I'll try. How's that? I'll try not to foul up the spaghetti, Sarge. That's better. Now, I want you to take the spaghetti out to the pasta machine, mm -hmm. cut it, and put it into the boiling water for five minutes. Yes, Sarge. <laughs> the spaghetti. Me, oh boy. <laughs> now, the rest of you understand your job. See how many sandwiches you can fit on each tray. There will be no stacking, no overlapping, and no hangovers. The one who figures out how to get the most sandwiches on the tray will win the Chocolate Julia Child Quad de Cuisine Award with Almond Cluster. Oh, no, I was ready, suffering, but ready. I was winning! Aim! People and in excellent time. Private Eye, let's take a look at your tray. Hmm, not crazy about the pattern or design, Private Eye. Were you able to get more than 16 sandwiches on your tray? You bet your babushka I got 17 sandwiches. Hmm, and how were you able to accomplish that? Let me show you. I leave these 12 sandwiches 
Where they were, I ingeniously turned these four sandwiches around, leaving room for one more sandwich here. That's 12 plus 4 plus 1. 17 sandwiches! I win! Cutting! Hold it down, Private Eye. Let's take a look at what the others have come up with. Private Party! Let's take a look at your tray. Thank you, Sarge. <clears throat> I found that by turning the sandwiches, I could make two rows of seven and then put four on the side. So, 14 plus four is 18. Good show, private party. And now let's see if Corporal Idea came up with a better idea than the rest of us. Corporal Idea! Well, actually, Sarge, you know, I'm one happy fella, because I do believe I have the winning combination. You see, I left three rows of four. That left room on the side for seven more sandwiches. Seven plus 12 for a grand total of 19. I think that's the winner. In fact, you couldn't get another sandwich on there even if you cut it up into little bitty pieces. <laughs> Congratulations, Corporal Idea. Once again, you've come up with a better idea. You win. Good to go. All right. Where's private matter and the spaghetti? Uh. Oh, Sarge, I just made the bestest spaghetti. You're gonna love it, Sarge. Go ahead, try it. It's so good, it's got a lot of mayonnaise. Private matter. Huh? Didn't you cut the spaghetti first? No, Sarge, I, I made it as one long piece so people could cut it off at the exact length they wanted. Not one of my better ideas, I guess. You've already seen this much of Square One TV. How much do you figure is left? Phil, nobody knows anything about that 110-year-old superhero you sent me to interview. Well, yes, I've been here in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for two hours now, and... What do you mean, oops? It was supposed to be the Black Hills of South Dakota? Listen, Phil, just get the limo up here as soon as you can, okay? Okay, bye. Let's see. Rangers, trails, more trees. I'll try trails. Maybe that'll lead me out of here. Excuse me. Hello. I'm Hollywood reporter Sybil Sawyer. What are you doing there? Did you lose something? No, I didn't. I'm checking some numbers on a hidden trail counter here. I don't understand. Let me explain. I'm Roger Collins of the Forest Service, and each year, the Forest Service installs some pressure plates, like this one right here. We bury them in the trail, and there's one right here, and as people come along and step on it like this, it records their number on the counter. Oh, well, that's really neat, but why do you need to count people anyway? Well, let's say there's four trails in the area. We'll install these pressure plates, and they'll tell us how many people are using the trails. And that way, when we get money for trail maintenance, we'll know which trails get the most use, and we'll put the money there. Mm -hmm. It also helps us when we're scheduling rangers to put them in the areas where most of the people are. Oh, well, what about this? What if one person walks on the trail five times instead of five people walking over it just once? Can you really tell the difference? No, you really can't, but it's not important whether it's five or six. The real important thing is whether it's three or 300 or even 3,000. Those are the big differences in the numbers that are important, not just the little ones. Well, how many people used this trail last week? 203. How about the week before that? 189. Well, I don't get it. If the numbers pretty much come up the same every time, then why do you need to keep counting them? Well, things tend to change. A few years ago, the counters showed that people enjoyed hiking the steeper, harder trails. Mm -hmm. And now they're showing us they like to hike the lower, more gentle trails. Oh, I see. Well, thank you, Roger. You're welcome. Well, you heard it here first. Easy, gentle trails are in these days. And by counting people today, rangers can help plan for tomorrow. And speaking of tomorrow, I'll be back on the regular beat where I'll visit movie star Sylvester Provolone in his sumptuous Hollywood home. We may even get to see his fabulous collection of antique boxing gloves. Till then, I'm your Hollywood reporter, Sybil Sawyer. And remember, Broadway is my beat. Bye-bye. The following song includes graphic descriptions of obtuse and acute angles. Viewers who might be offended by this subject matter should not view this program.
decide to raise the other one 90 degrees. Next hang a friend from the ceiling. If he loves you, I know he won't care. Clasp his hands real tight, get those angles right. There you've done it, you've made a square. Angle dance, angle dance. Help me measure these angles, please. Nancy Lieberman is a professional basketball player. In 1986, she became the first woman to play in a men's professional basketball league. She fakes, she shoots it up, and he hits it! As a professional athlete, I have to practice because my shots aren't always perfect. I always try and come back in the gym to correct the problems that I am having. And I spend endless hours in the gym, as I call it, doing my homework. I like to make practice harder than the game. So when I get into the game situation, it's, uh, it's the easy thing to look forward to. My mind and my body make thousands of computations every game. I look at the hoop, and my mind computes the distance to the basket, my height relative to the basket, and the arc the ball should take. When I'm in a game, I do a lot of figuring. Do I need to angle the shot off the backboard? What angle? When I'm getting ready to shoot a bank shot, I always make sure that my head is up looking at the basket and my eyes are fixed on the square, which is right behind the rim. That way I know exactly where I want to aim the ball and what angle I want the ball to come off that square. What are the odds of making the shot? Is it my best shot? If I usually go three out of 10, that means I've got a 30% chance of making that shot in a game. You think about these things most of the time without even knowing it. It's automatic. Practice makes it automatic. every move of Nancy Lieberman, Ron Spivey, they wanted to shoot. Nancy's up on, she puts it up and she hits again! The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names have been made up, but the problems are real. 
It was a Monday, 2.43 p.m., and warm in Los Angeles for that time of day. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. The boss is Dad Green. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. My partner is George Frankly. We'd gotten a call about a neighborhood disturbance, problem over a baseball. I mentioned it to George. We've got a problem, George. Baseball. I love baseball, Kate. Martha and I, we went to Dodger Stadium just last night, Kate. The Dodgers played in Cincinnati last night, George. Yeah, no trouble parking. You ought to go with us, Martha, and me to a Dodger game, Kate. No trouble parking. We've got a problem, George. Let's roll. <laughs> Three p.m. George and I drove to the neighborhood to question possible witnesses. One of the first rules of problem solving is getting the facts. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions, sir. Sure. Why not? Go ahead. I mean, shoot. I got nothing to hide. Yes, sir. You notice any kids playing baseball around here today? Kids? Yes, sir. Playing baseball? Yes, sir. That's what we want to know. Kids playing baseball. Not really. There's hardly enough room in the store for the new ski jump, let alone a baseball game. Yes, sir. We didn't mean in your store, sir. Besides, I wasn't here all day. Where were you? When? Then. Then? Then. There. What were you doing there? Where? There. Nothing. Not much, anyways. Uh, just watching a bunch of kids play baseball. Do you know where they are? Who? The kids. When? Then? No. Now. Yes. Where? There. <laughs> What happened, son? We lost our baseball, ma'am. Uh-huh. A lot of that going around. Yes, but this ball is different. Different? Yeah, you know. Not the same. How was it different? For one thing, it wasn't ours. It was my dad's. It was a special ball. It was signed by Babe Ruth. The King of Swat? Sultan of Swat. My dad finds that I lost his souvenir. He'll murder me. Gotta find that ball. When was the ball last seen? When Nell built it, I really teed off on it. Good pitch? High and tight. Right in my wheelhouse. I got the meat of the bat on it, and I was playing left field. Sailed over my head, still rising. I lost in the sun. She hit it a ton. It's as if it vanished in thin air. We can't find it anywhere. My dad's going to skin me. We'll do the best we can. Let's measure the area, sketch it on paper, and run it through the computer. It'll be easier to sift through the information once we can see it. Right. Anything else, kids? Don't think so. Just that I need that ball by the time my dad gets back from his business trip. Or he'll rip me to shreds. Yeah. yeah. We'll get back to you. 3.45 p.m. We asked Jenny Carlson, our computer expert in the lab, to help us out. She copied the information George gave her from his sketch onto the computer. All right. This is a map of the area. Here is home plate where the ball was hit. This is left field, the direction the ball took. What's that? That's the billboard, remember, George? Yeah, right. Now, if the ball landed in here, the kids would have found it. But the left fielder was here, and he said the ball went over his head. Well, if it landed behind the left fielder, they should have found it, too. It wasn't there. They looked, we looked, no ball. What if it had gone farther against the sign? That would be a heck of a clout. Do you think she could have hit it that far? She said she got it all. Well, if the ball hit the sign, this is what might have happened. It would have bounced here. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Yeah, the ball would bounce off the sign at the same angle it hit the sign. If this angle is 50 degrees, then this angle will be 50 degrees. Now, if the ball hit somewhere else, this might have happened. Uh-huh. Or it might have done this. In every case, the ball bounces off the sign at the same angle it hit the sign. Well, if it hit the sign, it would have to be somewhere in here. There was a house there, George. Let's roll. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm Monday, MathNet. This is my partner, George Frankly. MathNet. Mind if we ask you a few questions? Like what? These kids lost a valuable baseball. We have reason to suspect it might be on your property. We'd like to search the grounds for information. Mind if we take a look around? What would their baseball be doing on my property when they play way over there? The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. What? Mathematics and physics. We think the ball hit that sign. If it did, it should have bounced on your property, probably on your porch. Did you hear anything like that? A baseball bouncing on my porch? Yes, ma'am. No, but then I've been gone most of the day. Remember what time you left? I remember exactly. I forgot my shopping list. I had to go back inside to get it, and I noticed the clock. It said exactly 1.45. Yes, ma'am. Mind if we check that porch? OK. Watch the step. We went over the property with a fine-tooth comb. 
no sign of the ball. Let's take a look at that sign. Think the ball could have done that? Could be. Let's get back to the office. We'll keep working on it, kids. Sure hope you solve it. Your dad? Yeah, he'll join Porter me. Morning, Jenny. Did that new information help? Sure did. You know what? What? Look. That's the house. If the ball hit the sign where you think it did, it would have headed right for Mrs. McGregor's front door. It must be in the house. Couldn't be. The door's closed. But look at this. The ball hit here. It would have ricocheted and gone right here. If the door was closed, it would have bounced into this area. We look there. No ball. Kate, wait a minute. Remember what Mrs. McGregor said? Hello, ma'am. This is George Frankly, MapNet. Ma'am, when you went back into the house for your shopping list, did you close the door? You didn't? If the ball was hit then, it must be in the house. Ma'am, we're coming back to see you. We have reason to believe the baseball is in your house. Mind if we look around? Not really, but that's easier said than done. How's that, ma'am? My house has been stolen. We're going to do a thing that I call coin mind reading. Uh -oh. oh, I want you to help me out. Da, 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 da. Memo for the Pentagon. When in doubt as to which operation to do first, use parentheses. What's the only possible answer? I've got it. Good. The house is still there. What's the only other answer? I don't know. 100% of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation,